Good morning. morning. Welcome to St. Peter's United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, uh, you are welcome here. A blessed Palm Sunday to all of you. Since God's love is fully inclusive, we hear the people of St. Peter's unite to love God, nurture faith, and share our gifts. Friends, during our worship service this morning, I invite you to Worship as the Spirit so inspires you. So sing and dance and wave your palms, laugh, cry, play. Yeah, do we all have our palms? There we go. Um, Worship as the Spirit so inspires you this morning. If you're worshiping with us online this morning, welcome. It is a delight to have you with us. We invite you to take a moment to check in. Let us know that you are with us. And again, it is a delight to hear from you. A special welcome to any and all of our guests this morning. Uh, We want you to know that you are always welcome here. And you are invited for a time of fellowship and coffee in our fellowship hall, which is through the doors in the back of the sanctuary following the service. Now, children and youth, there is no disciple zone this morning, so uh, we encourage you to come down, there, and even those of us with busy hands, uh, you're encouraged to come down and take, there's some wonderful, I think, Palm Sunday-esque type uh, activities on the table in the back, as well as the lovely um, neon orange and neon green bags that have a bunch of fun stuff in it as well so feel free to come down and grab one of those i just came up with a new song okay what a friend we have in jesus (laughs) yeah yeah so icdi uh we are collect we continue to collect (laughs) yes i have a cold we continue to collect for icdi some toiletries and things like that there are tables in the back and we encourage you to check out the list and, uh, and look in your worship folder for those announcements as we gather for the folks supported by ICDI. Absolutely. Coming up on Saturday, this Saturday is the Bunny Breakfast, where I know. For it's really? For real. Oh. Um, the Easter Bunny will be here. Um, so you're getting in the spirit. I'm in the spirit. Fantastic. I'm ready for it. Even got a tail. I like yeah, it. You like that? I like it. Yeah. You're going to wear that at the Bunny Breakfast? I might. You oh, never very know. good. Hey, um, Bunny Breakfast is Saturday morning beginning. Focus. I'm trying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Saturday morning, 9 30 a.m. It's for children of all ages. Saturday? This Saturday. Children of all ages. Children of all ages. So the young and the old. There's crafts, there's an egg hunt, there's food. There's food. always food. Like Food's food. good. Um, and games, and there's just a whole bunch of fun stuff, as, as well as, you know, the Easter Bunny. Did I mention the Easter Bunny is going to be here? So if you're interested and you want more information, you can find that in your um, worship folder. You may also see, I think there's a sign-up and a lovely table, I believe, in the parish hall. So you can sign up and get more information about that. But it should be a really fun should morning. should be a fun morning. Yes. You done? I think so. Good, then I can take this off. <laughs> Holy Week. This is the start of Holy Week. We have Palm Sunday today, and thus you have your palms. And uh, also then on Monday, Thursday, that's on Thursday, um, we will be uh, commemorating and celebrating that particular day. 7 o'clock right here. It will be a very significant and meaningful service for you that will spiritually uplift you. And then Good Friday is... Friday, and uh, you are welcome to come for that. That will be a beautiful service, well-planned and well-delivered yep. on, on Good Friday, at, also at 7 p.m. And then Easter. Easter is coming, and that will mm-hmm. be next Sunday, right here, 7 a.m. sunrise service and the 9.30 celebration service. So be sure and join us for those. Absolutely. Our lector this morning is Larry Nunnemaker, so thank you, Larry, for leading us this morning in worship. So friends, I invite you to sit back and enjoy our prelude, which is Palm Sunday related, so enjoy.
morning. Will all those who are able please rise for the call of service? Worship. Sorry. This is the day our God has made. Open the gates of your hearts wide. Shout with joy, all God's people. in the prayer of invocation. With branches waving, we stand at the gates of Jerusalem and are swept up in the excitement of the parade. Jesus enters the gates on a colt and the people shout, Hosanna! On this day, may our hearts fill with joy as we celebrate with continued shouts of Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in God's name. Amen. Yeah. 
the reading today. Here we go. Give me a second, folks. The reading today is from Psalm 118, 1 and 2, 19 through 29. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, God's steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and God has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will give you thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good, for God's kind of step as loves forever. That's, I'm, thus ends the reading. Thank you. If children wish to join me down here, they may. Otherwise, it's fine. You can stay there as well. So whatever you wish to do this morning, I think a few. Okay, so mini message. How many of us love a good parade? What makes a parade great? The what? The band? The Jesse White Tumblr. The Jesse White (laughs) Yes. I've been in many parades with them, yes. Good weather. Good weather, absolutely. Candy, floats, kids. No politicians. (laughs) What else? Fellowship? Yeah. Are parades um, quiet? No. No. No, not by any means. Um, so, uh, yes, I was a baton twirler in my younger days, um, and some of it has stuck, some of it hasn't, but the drum corps that I was a part of, uh, we were out of Sycamore, Illinois, and so we drove out there, I think, a couple nights a week to practice, it got worse in the summer, because we were off, and so we practiced more, and we did competitions, everything like that, but I have been in numerous parades, probably from Memorial Day through, like, Christmas. Um, it was fun. It was exhausting, but it was fun. And can you imagine, um, you know, now we do the Memorial Day parade here, it, St. Peter's participates, right, every year, and yes, we are signed up this year, to so mark your calendars, Anyhow, um, it's an easy, we just walk. We hand out things, but we just walk. Um, Some of us, though, walked and did this, right? Ooh. (laughs) Thank you. Um, We, uh, I don't know if I can, it's been a while. It's been like 30 years. There you go. Imagine doing this for several miles, right? in the hot, sticky weather. But you know what I had fun with? I mean, baton twirling taught me a million different things, but you know what I had fun with that brought me joy? Was 
Yes, it was exhausting marching and all of that and the people everywhere and it was loud, but that was what also brought me joy, right? It was walking and the people and the kids are running around and I didn't realize any of this at the time because I was a kid. So what did I know? But now looking back, I go, wow, it was so much fun because the kids are running out and you don't want to hit them. You know, because they're running out to get the candy that's in the middle of the, of the street. And then also, you know, you're walking around, you know, certain horses like to do things in the middle. And, you know, you're, you're, you're having fun. And isn't that what a parade should be? Whether you're sitting on the sideline, you know, on the curbs, or you're walking in it, or whatever you're doing in a parade. Well, today, the parade, it didn't have... Um, Jesus Parade, right? But Palm Sunday is all about. We're going to hear the story in a little bit. What was great about that was, yes, it was just Jesus, right? He was sitting on a donkey. He had um, his, his entourage, as I like to call him, his disciples, his friends were walking with him. But so he didn't have the marching bands and the kids running out for candy, and he didn't have anything like that. But he did have the big parade spectacle. Right? He had that grand moment as he walked from wherever he was outside the gates of Jerusalem, walking in to, through those gates of Jerusalem, this huge city that is just overflowing with people. And we'll get more into the details of this day in a moment. But that day was joyous. It was celebration. It was everything that a parade you would think it would be. Right? So this day, I invite you to remember that, to take your palm branches, wave them. Um, I don't think you need to lay your cloaks down on the floor or anything like that. I think we're good there. But take your palm branches, wave them through our hymns, enjoy the celebration of this day for more is to come, um, and just remember how joyous that parade must have been. Amen. As we enter our prayer time this morning, we ask that you uh, continue to pray for those persons who are listed on the prayer list, and that can be found in your worship folder, as well as in the weekly word, and be sure and share those prayers. Prayers in my heart this week, and continuing, are the prayers for the famines around the world, the many famines, those persons who are starving in Africa, those persons who continue to starve. Famines were supposed to be gone in the 21st century, but famines are not because they have become a process of war and a process of reaching out to destroy people by lack of food. It is a crisis, and we ask that you pray for those persons who are hungry and isolated. We also ask that you pray for peace. And pray for those persons who are traveling with their families this week in uh, spring break. I don't know about when you traveled with your family. It's usually filled with joy, but requires some prayer. So let us center ourselves for prayer with our prayer song. and with all our mind, let us join as the church in prayer. God, who warms us like sunshine, God, who blesses us with the freshness of spring, God, who walks with us in the valleys and sings with us in the mountaintops, God, who loves us, we thank you. God, in your mercy. God, we bring to you this day all who ail in body and mind and spirit, Help us help. Help each of us commit to helping others. We seek goodness for us and goodness for all. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
God, we bring to you our hunger, our hunger that all may be fed, that justice may include mercy, and mercy may include feeding. For the world is filled with famines, famines of spirit, famines of will, and famines of food. God, help us help. God, in your mercy. We remember and pray for the search committee that they may have unity, spiritual strength, wisdom, fortitude, and fun. Guide them, calling God. God, in your mercy. O Lord, our governor, whose glory is in all the world, we commend this nation to your merciful care, that we may dwell secure in your peace. Grant to the President of the United States, the governor of this state, and to all in authority, wisdom and strength to know and to do your will. God, in your mercy. God of many, lover of all, we pray for peace. For those who are fleeing, we pray for sanctuary. For those who are staying, we pray for safety. For those who are fighting, we pray for peace. For those whose hearts are breaking, we pray for comfort. For those under the weapon of hunger, we pray for food. For those who see and see no future, we pray for hope. God, in your mercy. Into the glory of your parade we march, O God. We wave our palms in solidarity with your hope. We lay our lives before you to pave the way for your entrance into the world. And we march beside you toward the glorious day of resurrection when we, when we may bring you endless praise. God, in your mercy. And now we join our one voice with the many praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Oh, <laughs> 
beautifully done and we appreciate uh, all of the gifts that you bring particularly this time of the year lots of other practices and other things to be done and uh, we appreciate your efforts at all times um, we come to the time of sharing here and we invite you to share in the many ways that you are able to you can log in right now on the uh, on the um, tithely app and make your contribution that way you can go to the website and there make your contribution the website is uh, st. Peter's Elmhurst.org or you can make a contribution in the, uh, in the plate in the back. You can arrange for constant giving through, your, uh, through, through direct deposit, or you can simply mail us a check, and we're always glad to receive those. Now, part of what we do here is celebrate the many ministries that we, with which we connect, and uh, as we come through Changing Tomorrows and want to make contributions to Changing Tomorrows, you can continue to do that. Just mark on your contribution that it's for Changing Tomorrows. And one of the things that we support through our Changing Tomorrow uh, gifts is a ministry called PADS, Public Action to Deliver Shelter. And Marlene, would you join us up here, please? Marlene comes from PADS. Pad, uh, St. Peter's has been involved in PADS for a long time, uh, probably at the beginning of PADS from all that I can remember. And uh, come on. And uh, we, have, we, we continue to make the, con the contributions. But um, PADS has changed. The pandemic changed pads, and you've now moved into a particular facility. And what, what do you call that facility? Our interim housing center. Okay, you need to hold the microphone oh, here okay. so they can hear you. I speak really loud, so I don't know if I'll need to Give it a time, shot. But yes. So um, my name is Marlene CJ. I'm the Director of Corporate and Community Relations at DuPage Pads. And as you know, DuPage Pads has been in existence, going to be 40 years this coming year. So a lot of great things have happened. Um, and we continue to evolve. Yes, Pastor. COVID did a number. Yes, it did. <laughs> so if you imagine, PADS started with the congregate shelter. Like you mentioned, our PADS are on the floor in churches, and you guys have been including very, this church. including yep. this church, have been very much a part of us, and we appreciate it for all those years and for all of you. Um, so imagine our move forward to COVID. Times were uncertain. We just didn't know what was going to happen. People were still facing homelessness, food insecurity, and things of all that, that comes with that. And we still wanted to continue to serve. So our team said, um, well, let's try renting hotel rooms. And something fantastic happened with that. It was a beautiful involvement where folks were one safe. They had their own door. They had families were together. No longer were mom and dad separated from the children. We were able to have and provide that safety for the folks working on ending their homelessness on their sustainable journey to end it once and for all. So move forward, COVID continues. We go from you know rooms here, rooms there at uh, different Red Ribbon and extended stays. Now we're at 80% occupancy. What are we doing? What's happening here? People were having a more peaceful time with their journey in knowing that they had safety, that safety net of their own door, that privacy. They had a shower. They had a small refrigerator, a small microwave to provide the meals they needed for their families or themselves. So the team said, well, hmm, what do we have here? What's going on? What's, what, what are we really being told? That this is a great 
model to be able to help those folks that are needing our extra hand up at this moment. So then came the wonderful idea of saying, well, let's purchase the Red Roof Inn and let's continue to provide the shelter, pro provide the tools that they need, food, security, the extra program teams were coming in to help them with whatever it is they needed to work through. So here we are, um, almost two years ago in a few days, a, a great time for us all. Not only is it a celebration of Easter, but it's a time where we evolved as well as an organization, as a nonprofit working to end homelessness. Said, let's purchase a hotel. Let's purchase the Red Roof Inn. Let's take this forward and really continue to help those people in this model. Super grateful for the time that we had in the congregate shelter, but we're evolving with what is in front of us and let's continue to help. So we did. Two years ago, um, March 29th, two years ago, in a few days, um, we purchased the Red Roof Inn. It was a huge capital campaign with support from your church as well. That has continually been there a staple for us, so thank you. Um, but on top of that, we opened it up and really said, this is what our cry is, are really what we need at this time to evolve and to continue. We were able to do it with many supporters, such as this church, as well as other supporters, and we purchased the Red Roof Inn March 29th. What does this mean? This means that we have, at any given time, over 300 folks, over 105, 110 children, it fluctuates, but everyone is there working on ending their homelessness. And our goal for everybody there is to create, again, that safe space where they can continue to flourish in their path, but also to give them the resources that they need. They work with our programs team. It's not just sitting there. They are working continually with our program teams to see what it is the best program that they can go to get their own key into their very own door. That's important. We give them hope. In the sermon, you talked about the joy in having that parade. We want to give them that joy, that safety net to say, you know what, we're here for you in this moment. And that's what we're doing. We have resources rooms. I see Bob sitting there, that smiling face that often has come in and provided that food for folks. Sandy also <coughs> was with me. She's also a board member. Um, she had, goes in there and we provide them food. Um, on a daily basis, usually uh, dinner right now until we get our commercial kitchen installed. There's resource rooms where they can freely take and shop whatever they need, whether it be food, um, food as far as shelf-stable food, imagine that small microwave, small uh, refrigerator that they can provide meals for themselves or their families. And we have activities for the children. We're gearing up for the Easter Bunny to come next week, Saturday. And we continue to have that welcoming space where they have the they can rest assured that we're gonna give them that hope and that safety that they need. And you've, you've started to hit some new milestones. The folks tend to be more stable. Yes, absolutely. And they have more opportunity. Absolutely. Um, lower uh, mental health in outcomes. That is huge. Or better mental health that outcomes. Is huge. So those, those kinds of things are making a giant difference. They are making clients. a big difference. Think mm -hmm. about a family of nine. Our largest family right now is nine. A mom and dad going from one in the old setting from one congregate shelter for, to another. Like say maybe they're coming to Elmhurst today mm -hmm. and tomorrow they have to go to Wheaton. How do you get there with public transportation? That's where some of that mental anguish comes in of yep. what do we do? How do I provide for my family? How do I give them that safety net? So in this place they're able to really fully, safe, securely work on that path. Um, what we have for the future, this is huge. 130 rooms at the Interim Housing Center in Downers Grove and we don't have a kitchen. So <laughs> we have been um, blessed enough and, and really creative enough to be able to provide that space, a converted room, to provide meals out of. But our future holds a commercial kitchen, kind of a gully kitchen, where folks can come in freely and grab their meals, their resources, and continue to do what they're doing for that day. So I invite you all to come. Seeing it is just, it's eye-awakening, it and it's completely revolutionary it because is. you get to see, like Bob can probably share with you, you can see those faces day in and day out and the gratitude and the joy that they feel for being there. And just, it comes through them, from the children running around to 
there's a lot of projections. We foresee a playground. Um, we're also going through renovations of the rooms right now. So right now I mentioned the large family of nine. How does a large family of nine think about going on your spring breaks with your families? If you had nine of you, mom, dad, and seven children, how are you going to fit in a That'd room? Be tough. That'd it be tough. It would be tough, wouldn't yeah. it? So we're trying to strategically place every room so a family of nine could have some comfort or more comfort than is there now. Um, of course, it's not going to be 100% because it's a lot of kitties. Um, but they could have safe space as well if they're two individuals rooming together. So that is also in the transformation phases. Good. We're doing a two by two. Um, and I invite you all to come to just see it with your own eyes and get involved if you wanted to come back and you can volunteer in resource rooms. You could all kinds of things that you Great. can do and we're always welcoming of you. Thank so you. So thank you. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank we you appreciate you so much. Thanks for the partnership. text this morning, a familiar story from Palm Sunday, it comes to us this year from the Gospel of Mark, the 11th chapter. So let us hear this Palm, story, Palm Sunday story once again. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Beth Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. 
Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he looked around at everything as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. May God add understanding to our hearing of this holy word. in the scene a little bit. We heard the scripture, but let's really dive in a little bit. Because this is literally the party of the century, or at least to the people there, it's the party of the century. And there's tons and tons of people. The city swells with preparations for the big feast and festival. They are throwing their cloaks and other fabrics and other blankets on the dusty ground. There are shouts and screams and simply a massive celebration. The celebrity whose coming has been gaining notoriety for a whole host of reasons. Some of those reasons aren't so great, but hey, we're going to celebrate his arrival anyhow. Meanwhile, as the city prepares for the arrival of this celebrity, right, there are other onlookers. Ones who wish to squash this noise, this sort of rebel noise that's taking place. They don't see it as fun and celebrations. We don't hear about them too much. They're not really spoken of, but we know that they're there. They're watching with disdain and worry in their eyes. And somewhere outside the city, this celeb and his entourage are making preparations, As Mark just told us, a few in his entourage are told to go and get a few things, including a colt or a foil, a small donkey of sorts. It will carry him into the city because this celebrity doesn't want the bling of some big, mighty horse. Instead, he wants a small, humble, yet noble steed. He asks for cloaks to be placed on this donkey, and he's making sure that all things are ready. And so then he begins his journey into the swelling, overcrowded city. And as he enters, he notices that people are taking branches from nearby trees, palm trees, actually. They wave them like they just don't care. And they shout a deafening sound, Hosanna, save me, Hosanna, save us. Blessed is he. People follow the parade route. They want to touch him, right? They want to talk with him. They want to hear about the experiences that they've been told about this person, the one who can supposedly heal the sick and raise the dead and perform all of these other miracles. But this celebrity knows that not all will be joyful this week like this parade. Not all will be happy with shouts of celebrations as fun, for he has come to the city for a purpose. Yes, he is actually coming for the same reason that the crowd is, right? The feast, the festival. But there's something else that he has to do. And there's other things much to do. And there's no joy in knowing what lies ahead. Or is there joy? So are you with me? Can you picture it? So pause for a moment. Think about it. Feel the weight of that crowd pressing in. 
the smell of body odor, sweat, food cooking, the smell of an overcrowded city, the smell of a cult, the donkey. Take in the scene, right? It's a familiar one for us. We hear this story every year. It's a story that's joyful, celebration. There's smiles and laughter and play. It's a parade, a spectacle, a homecoming of sorts. But we know how this story ends. We know what lies ahead. We know that this man will get angry, will overturn tables in the temple in a few days, We know that he will dine with his friends and offer them some deeply profound words about his body, his blood, about doing this in remembrance of him. He will wash their feet. He will allow a woman to wash his feet with an expensive perfume. He will go off to pray while his friends sleep off all of the food and drink. He will be, well, it's getting ahead of the story, isn't it? Not all will be joyful this week. But on Palm Sunday, this triumphal date, this entry day, this is the day that we put our palms in the air and wave them like we just don't care. This is the day of joy, one that we shout, Hosanna, save me. The day we talk about parades and donkeys and this celebrity, this man who's been making a ton of noise the past few years with speeches and teachings and healings and miracles. But today, today is the turning point. It's the arc of the story, the pinnacle turning point, the day that sets things and events of the week in motion. It's a day of joy, a little bit of sorrow maybe, Playfulness, for sure. It's the day of the beginning of the end. But let's back up a minute, because there's a few things that we need to remember about this parade of palms, right? But first, the Jesus, he's the celebrity I've been referring to, by the way. He enters Jerusalem in style. His own type of style, true, but he enters Jerusalem in style, It's a calculated move, because he's not the first person to do this. He's just doing it differently. He's the first to use a colt or a donkey, but he's not riding into Jerusalem like some big important person of the time where the parade and the grandness take over. That's left for Roman officials, military leaders, other dignitaries who would have ridden into the city in similar fashion, though they would have had the big white horse and the mighty steeds and banners and trumpets playing and the huge paradeness of everything. At most, right, as I mentioned earlier in our mini message, Jesus was walking with his disciples, his entourage, as I like to call him, maybe a few of his close friends. Jesus riding into the gates of Jerusalem in this humble fashion is a political statement. A sort of, hello, you see what I did here to the Roman Empire? Because Jesus is claiming his importance, his dignitary status, and the people know it. Especially those naysayers, those ones who, that I mentioned earlier, those onlookers who we hear about what we don't really hear about, but they're there. Those are the religious officials, the Pharisees and such. We know they're present, though scripture doesn't really mention them all too much. So this moment of Jesus walking in to Jerusalem is calculated, kind of. Then, of course, remember that the city is swelling. It's over capacity. It's bursting at the seams. People are lining the streets, creating their own little camps wherever they can. Because it's Passover, and Jerusalem is the place to be. They've come home. The amount of people is overwhelming, and those naysayers, those Pharisees and whatnot, are looking on in anxiousness. Rome is watching as well. Things cannot go wrong this week. There's too much at stake. But then, you know, in rides this guy on a colt who's been making a little bit of noise outside the city for many years, and here he's now in the city. So what could go wrong, right? Eh, 
maybe just a little. Now, earlier this week, I was with Pastor Tim and a few other members, and somehow the discussion of Holy Week came up because it's that time of year. And the discussion revolved around how some of us are Monday, Thursday, the Last Supper sort of people, or how some of us are Good Friday sort of people. We prefer one or the other as opposed to like liking both. So I thought about that a bit. What about Palm Sunday? Aren't there Palm Sunday people? Because this is a day of joy, is it not? It's celebration. It's the beginning of Holy Week. Jesus has arrived in Jerusalem. Yay! Palms are waving and people are cheering. And as far as we know, there was singing and laughing and play and children darting in and out of that procession, laughing and playing. And if even if that only happened for a few minutes as he walked into those gates of Jerusalem. Palm Sunday sets the tone for this week. Or maybe it should. Maybe it doesn't really, but maybe it should. Because this is the moment. When all the wheels and things are are set into motion, those things that aren't awesome, right, later in the week. Because later in the week, we have sadness, anger, doubt, confusion, fear. This week, we run the gamut of emotions. And there's no denying that today we may feel joy, but by Friday, we're weeping at the closing of the tomb, only then to be full of joy next Sunday at the emptiness of the tomb. Welcome to Holy Week. But Palm Sunday, it's a day of joy and love and grace and fun and play. And Palm Sunday offers us this moment to recognize that we have joy now. Sorrow is to come and joy will come again. Isn't that what Jesus reminds us anyhow? That we may have sorrow now. I don't know how many times I've read that scripture in memorial services. That we have sorrow now, but that he, Jesus, will come again. And isn't there joy in that knowledge? Or perhaps we simply need to be ignorant about what's to come. Ignore the feeling of the the foreboding, the scary, that suspenseful music that's playing in the background like in a movie, right, for the whole week. Because you know that something is about to happen, something bad is about to happen. Maybe we turn a blind eye and focus on the parade of this morning, the joy, the laughter, the fun, and wave our palms high. Because I feel like that's what the disciples did. They turned a blind eye, as if they didn't know what was to come. And on the one hand, it's true. They wanted to go to Jerusalem. Yet on the other hand, they were fearful, I suspect. Rome wasn't an empire you wanted to mess with. So walking besides their friend, making it known to everyone whose side they're on, it's a big moment for them. fair to say that few of them eventually turned their backs on him. Though, as we know, ignoring something isn't healthy either. It usually gets us nowhere. So, okay, I'm going to suggest that we don't ignore this moment. Scratch it, right? We can't ignore what is to come later this week. We here know too much. The disciples, will give them a pass. They didn't know any better. Everything sort of came to understanding later in the week as events and things went along, the longer they stayed in Jerusalem. So right now, we'll let them be ignorant. But for us, it's a little different, isn't it? Because we know what's to come. So perhaps we take the joy of this day and we carry it with us into the week. That we take our palm branches and wave them like we don't care all week. Even when we're talking final meals and crosses and tombs, that perhaps we carry the joy of this day in our hearts knowing that week isn't going to be super joyful and that's okay. But perhaps this joy will remind our hearts, will remind our faith of what all of this means, what this week, what Jesus taught us, what God's love means for us, that perhaps these palm branches that we carry with us 
are symbols of joy this year, that they guide us through a week of ups and downs. Maybe? I don't know. Something to ponder. So, friends, I do, though, invite you to wave, put your palms in the air and wave them like you just don't care. This day, tomorrow, every day this week. There you go. Love it. That whether we're gathered around God's table or we're gathering at the base of the cross, hearing that tomb shut, wave your palms, hold your palms close to you. Remind yourself that God's joy, the joy that's in our hearts, is with us now and always through all that we go through. Amen. understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ and may the blessing of the God Almighty be with you always go forth with Palm Sunday joy amen, amen.